Hurricane Scam Alert. This was a press release done by the, the Attorney General Fitch and the Mississippi Board of Contractors released a statement on May the 31st to be aware of the contractor scams that are going to occur after hurricanes. They did on May the 31st because in my recent video I did about preparing for the hurricane. Hurricane season is from June 1st to November the 30th. That's a good video also to watch being that we are in hurricane season at this moment and we've had record high temperatures but they expect some storms and possibly some real bad ones this year. So it's not something to, to wait about. Check it out. So if you're prepared, somewhat prepared, see what you got to do. We're going to get into this one. I will link the original news release in the description, like always. In their release, they say, in the best defense against scammers is a well-educated consumer. Damages are going to happen. Keep these in mind after the storms have occurred. Their tips are residential repair or improvement projects 10000 or more, and commercial projects 50000 or more require a valid contractor's license. They may require it for that amount of value, but if you're still if you're getting any work done make sure they're a licensed contractor or insured it says be weary of door-to-door -door repair solicitations or people who demand deposit or payments in cash do not make a large deposit or upfront payment in full those two go hand in hand if they're only wanting cash, it's harder to trace cash and they can lie to you about who they are, what they're involved in, or what they're doing. If they want the deposit or payments in cash up front, that's a good indicator that they're not well established or not established at all, and they're just wanting to take your money and run or hold it hostage until they can get around to it. They may be a legit company, but if they got 30 people ahead of you and they go ahead and take your payment, then you're going to be waiting a while. Require a written contract that details the work to be done, materials to be used, a payment schedule that is based on completion of work and a timeline of work to be completed. Do not make payments before work specified on the payment schedule is completed. Do not make payments for any work not specified in the contract unless it has been submitted and approved in writing by you before the additional work begins. Just contact the local permitting office or inspection department to determine if permits are required to assure building code compliance. If permits are required, the contractor should pull them, confirm with the permit officer that the contractor has acquired them before construction begins. Before making final payment, evaluate the completed work and require the contractor to confirm that all subcontractors and suppliers have been paid to eliminate potential liens on your property. Request a certificate of insurance from the contractor and verify it is valid by contacting the party who issued Shoot it. it says ask for proof of the contractor is licensed consumers can verify if the contractor is properly licensed by using the contractor search feature at www.msboc.us or by calling msboc at 800-880-6161 i will put all this contact information on the screen or you can click the link in the description here's some tips from the federal trade commission scammers knock on your door look for business because they are in the area scammers say they have materials left over from a previous job scammers pressure you for immediate decision scammers ask you to pay for everything up front or only accept cash scammers ask you to get any required building permit scammers suggest you borrow money from a lender they know they do that because they may be that lender and they may have you up with a loan chart they may have you at such a high interest rate don't do that don't go to a lender that you're not familiar with get contractor recommendations from people you know and trust get multiple estimates a written estimate Estimates should include a description of the work to be done, materials used, completion date, and the price. Don't automatically choose the lowest bidder and ask for any explanation if there's a big difference in among the estimates. Read the contract carefully. Contracts requirements vary by state. Even if your state doesn't require a written agreement, ask for one. Before you sign a contract, make sure it includes the contractor's name, address, phone number, and license number, an estimated start and completion date, any promises made during the conversations or calls related to the issues, such as the scope of work and the cost of labor and material, a written statement of your right to cancel the contract within three business days if you signed it in your home or a location other than the seller's permanent place of business. Make sure all blanks spaces are filled in. If you have a contract and there's a blank space, put a line through it, initial it, or right left blank, initial, that way they can't fill it in later. Out of state contractors. This is going to be a big one during repair times of the hurricane damage. We've all seen it before. They flood in. Also, when you do hail damage to a car, everybody's seen those fly-by-night dent repair shops that just pop up on the side of the road. 
This is kind of referring to stuff like that. There are contractors out there who follow storm events from state to state looking for easy targets. Hiring an out-of-state contractor can be problematic for a couple of reasons. First, if they are careless work or didn't complete the job at all but still took your money, they'll be difficult to track down. Second, even if it's a legitimate company, if an issue pops up later, you might have a difficult time getting them to come back to correct their mistakes. Poor workmanship or material. Some contractors will use cheap materials to hire inexperienced workers in order to make a bigger profit. They might even cause damage to your roof or siding and indicate it was caused by the storm. Unforeseen problems. If a contractor reveals an unforeseen problem, be guarded. A good contractor should be aware when a storm comes through the obvious damage and they should let you know then that there may be damages that you cannot see. Most time with roof damages, it might damage your shingles, but it also might damage the boards underneath. That's something to be aware of. They should be able to tell you some kind of idea before the work starts. Improper permits. A building permit ensures that the property was reviewed and inspected to meet codes, ordinances, and requirements. If a contractor fails to get the correct permit, there may be other risk involved. A good contractor will know what permits to pull. Proper licensing. If your contractor doesn't have a proper license that meets the state's requirements, you could be held responsible if it, an issue arises during the project. Put this one back in. I know you, there's a constant theme of get the license, see the license. Proper licensing is there's different licensing, but we're just talking about your out-of-state contractors. Make sure that they have a license and make sure that license has Mississippi on it. Contract agreements. If they're not willing to put their terms or what they're telling you they're going to do in a contract that tells you that they've been caught up in a contract issue before or they're not licensed and not capable of doing what they're telling you they're doing. Businessinsider.com. Here's a few tips that I got off of theirs. Do a thorough check of Google and Yelp reviews. I would also add Facebook and other social media. And sign up for Angie, the home service website formerly known as Angie's List. It's a good sign that the contractors are credited by the Better Business Bureau. If somebody does bad work, somebody is going to be on Google telling you, get Yelp, Facebook, Instagram, they're going to be on there and they're going to tell you. Check if the company has a website and see if they're updating the social media with photos of completed projects. Both can be a sign that they're operating a legitimate business, especially if they're engaging with customers on social media. If one guy is half the price of everybody else and doesn't have a website, just has an Instagram account, says you should be suspicious. Social media is the new advertising programs. They get in front of so many eyes. They share their work. They can You can see what type of work they do. If they're not doing any of that, it might be something somewhat suspicious especially if it's a company you've never heard of or your friends haven't used them but some of your contractors down in my area they don't have any type of social media it's all word of mouth but that's the part that you ask your friends or even ask them if there is somebody nearby that you've done work for and go look and see see ask the people say hey i'm thinking about hiring this person how did it work out for you I mean, especially if it's a neighbor or somebody you know, they won't they won't mind telling you if they did a good job or a bad job. If they did bad, they will most definitely tell you they wouldn't hire them again. Ask probing questions during the interview or when they come up and approach you or you approach them. Ask detailed questions. If you don't know it, ask it. Just keep asking questions. If they get frustrated and don't really have an answer, they're probably not legitimate. If they are a good, honest contractor, they'll be able to answer all your questions and make you feel good about their answer. If they get irritated with you, then they're probably there for a scam and they're wasting their time. Ask your contractor for a copy of their insurance policy and call the insurance company to verify that the contractor is covered. This can ensure that you are not liable for any accidents that may happen to the job. Don't be scared to call their insurance company. What we do with on a day-to-day -day basis in traffic stops and stuff people will have a insurance card but they didn't keep their insurance payment that was a huge issue somebody would go to one of these fly-by-night insurance companies say i want a year's worth of insurance but i want to pay monthly note after they get their cards in that show that they're good for a year they will cancel the insurance or not pay the next note but they still have a insurance card that's good for a year that is why the state has implemented a program to where when you file for insurance insurance companies required to attach that to your VIN number. When it's attached to your VIN number, it becomes attached to your tag. When we run your tag, it shows that whether your insurance is up to date or not. If you do not pay your insurance now, when we run your tag, it will say that you're you're uninsured. Remember these tips. Don't get scammed. And as always, thank you for watching. Have a great day.